And then the queen does uh, the good old, like, evil bad guy, evil queen thing where she does the two claps, like, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I always love this because the slaves bring him a pillow and a something. I was, I want to see the scene where they plot out what the claps mean. Like, you know, does she do two? And <laughs> someone just bashes him over the head. No, that's one clap. That's one oh. clap. God damn Sorry, it. You know? I missed clap practice this week. What do you want? That's why you come to clap practice. That is why you come to clap practice. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema so that we can remind all those quarantine folks that most people aren't worth interacting with in the first place. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us today, which is weird. I mean, it can't really be that he went somewhere, can it? But he's not here. Anyway, <laughs> sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. Played an excellent prank on today's guest. Uh, the hits keep on coming. It's great. My life is largely unchanged. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like I'm missing out on something because it was just already like this. Yeah. All right. And of course, also joining us today as the host of the Opening Arguments podcast, Philosophers in Space, Serious Inquiries Only, and Impromptu Homeschooler right the fuck now as we record, <laughs> Thomas Smith. Thomas, welcome back, sir. How's, uh, how's quarantine treating you? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. First off, question. Who you said something about a hooth? He? Hey, <laughs> I don't even know. Is that like a joke? He's a mythical creature, ghost? like a Sasquatch. Yeah. Yeah. A joke like, oh, he's not here today or whatever. Like, yeah, he's our joke. Matt the Damon. The gag is like he'll never be on the show. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Anyway, sorry. I was just curious. <laughs> I didn't know that inside joke. I, yeah. No, quarantine, as Eli just mentioned, uh, same. I think for podcasters, <laughs> quarantine is identical to my normal life. So that's cool. If anything, I'm going outside more, actually, because mm-hmm. like, you know, they're like, oh, make sure you get exercise. Like, oh, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> okay, yeah, I should do that. The problem is my life is the same, but now I've got two kids and a wife uh-huh. who are now also my life. Yeah. So that's so it's like everybody. It's like a video game. Everybody's on top in the path. Everybody's just we're on top of each other. All the time. And I, I was like, I was doing this yeah. before it was cool. Well, I was quarantining before it was cool. Now we're all quarantining. So if you want to know how much I love doing this show, <laughs> I took feels what feels like five to six hours of my precious, <laughs> precious time when the kids are asleep. And I dedicated it to watching this movie. All right. That's how much I love doing the show. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Well, speaking of this movie, great segue there. Tell us, Thomas. What will we be breaking down today? We will be breaking down Sodom and Gomorrah, which is a handful of Bible sentences that were turned into <laughs> two hours and 22 oh, minutes and of movie. Two hours. And, and if you're wondering how they managed that, it's easy. I got it step by step. Step one, make up two hours and 21 minutes of completely <laughs> original story. Step two, turn Lot's wife into a pillar of salt. Yep. Step three, yep. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> step three, profit, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how the budget would. Actually, there's some intermediate steps we skip. Like there's step three, hire seven to 8,000 horse actors. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I didn't catch in the credits, but if there was a director of horse casting, that person deserves the Oscar. Like they should have gotten the Oscar. Gone through Hardest working person in Morocco. Resumes. Yeah, exactly. It's like this. Oh, this one says special skills neighing, but that's, that's not really a special skill. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> This is horse Hollywood. I got news for you, kid. Every horse can neigh. Yeah. Oh, but they they studied under Meisner, though. Put in the maiden. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be fair, he did later do Sex in the City, though, and he nailed that. So he's, he's done two really good projects. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you miss the bygone days when movies were little more than the longest possible distraction you could put in front of the masses. <laughs> but gosh darn it, if Lawrence of Arabia wasn't too gripping and fast-paced for your liking, <gasps> you will love this movie. This movie is scientific proof that nostalgia is based on selective memory. The movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, uh, it was... Boy, were extras cheap in Morocco back then, <laughs> the movie. But yeah. Yep. 
All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Sure. I will say best. Well, I, I can't, again, I can't make this claim knowing the, the broadness of your, uh, of your catalog that you've gone through, <laughs> but from my liking best worst incest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they took out the incest that was in the story because yuck, <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, gross. And then they're like, you know what this movie's missing? Very, 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 very weird, inexplicable sexual <laughs> tension between a brother and a sister. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's yeah. Hollywood, so they took out the incest, but it's Hollywood, so they put in some incest. <laughs> <laughs> like, please. Well, only certain kinds of incest are allowed. Come yeah, on. exactly. Exactly. All right. I was going to go with best worst X rating. Apparently, this movie with all its cleavage and all its, you know, <laughs> post orgy, but fully dressed pan shots and whatnot was too damn hot for the UK. So this movie received the equivalent of an NC-17 rating. In England in 1962, that's how fucking prudish we were that recently. Yeah, I almost went with best worst destroy the minds of the people who made this movie with shit we put on TV. Yeah. Like you could show people episode one of season one of Flavor of Love who made this movie and they would all explode like the bad guys in <laughs> Scanners. <laughs> but instead, I went with best worst. Ah, 1962. Because the most common phrase in my notes throughout this movie is, ah, 1962, when you wanted to blank, all you had to do was blank. <laughs> <laughs> Want to drop a building on some people? Just drop a building on some people. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. But if slap a woman wasn't one of those blanks, I would feel way better about that joke. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of deep eye rolls on the other side of this break, and those can cause sprains if you don't stretch your eyes first. So we're going to pause for a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the blatant half-assed attempts to recreate the magic of DeMille's The Ten Commandments that is The Last Days of Sodom and Gomorrah, which is technically the title of this one in the U.S. It was said, I didn't see that. <laughs> I watched the wrong movie, yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, that was the... Yeah, ours was only 14 minutes, Thomas. <laughs> 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 Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first ever writer's room meeting for Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, yeah. pickles and bees. Now, we've got the biggest names in show business for this one. We've got Stuart Granger. Otzi Totsi. The lovely Pierre and Jelly. Ay, caramba. And, of course, Stanley Baker, a cast that everyone will remember for years to come. Oh, for oh, sure. Absolutely. All right, now listen. Uh, I gave the Bible thing a look. It doesn't have the goods. Where's the romance? Where's the passion? Where's the multiple 22-minute long shots of horse stuff? Yeah, almost no horse stuff. So we're keeping the good stuff. The city falls over, the sexy dance, and everything else we're going to build from the ground up. Boys, you hear me? The ground up. Now say, boss, boss, are we keeping the part where he gives his daughters up to be raped? Yeah, good question. Better? Better. We're turning it into a love triangle. Love it. Oh, tasteful. Hey, you mind if I smoke in here? Well, you can't do that without a drink and a steak. Yeah, yeah. Me too. It's 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on some pretty solid decadence, right? Like, get the long <laughs> decadence span, which, I mean, for 1962 movie, this is pretty, like, risque, but, like, for an orgy, these folks are all very modestly dressed. <laughs> Because we're supposed to be like, it's like the morning after the orgy, which means at the end of this orgy, everyone had to like go find their jammies and then lay back where they were, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm calling bullshit on the whole everyone sleeping soundly in a pile after the orgy. Uh, I'd be, I'd be the guy that's just like, fucking Eli's breathing so goddamn loud. <laughs> Shut up, man. Uh, I'd just be sitting, nobody's sleeping in a pile of 40 people. There's just a wet spot everywhere. <laughs> you roll off of one wet spot onto a another it's just yeah no it's <laughs> oh it's no good i would give anything for an accurate orgy at the beginning of this movie right there's the one guy who's like trying to chat everyone up and you're like dude it's fucking 9 a.m <laughs> fuck away from me the orgy was last night man you can go home <laughs> also i'm not, not that good at history but like middle eastern people were really white back then they really were real they white really yeah. were. <laughs> exactly. well not white not all of them some of them were painted yeah. yellow for some reason <laughs> so 
I almost gave this movie best worst. Eh, just put a hat on Steve. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you always get two rows of dressed up extras, but that third row is just a guy in like blue jeans and a t-shirt being like Muslim, 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 or whatever I am. <laughs> we, like, we blew it all on the horse budget. How yeah. we had the money to hire nine thousand horses. What do we? Just find bring your own costumes, everybody. Come on, <laughs> making less money than that horse over there. <laughs> You're damn right. Yeah. That horse is equity. Yeah. <laughs> that horse studied under Meisner. <laughs> so, yeah, yes, yeah. we have this long decadence pan over the credits and everything. And then this one chick, like, wakes up and, and wanders off. She's got a secret post-orgy mission. <laughs> yeah. Right? And she, so she sneaks out of this orgy like a teenager coming home drunk, uh, walks out into this ancient city, and then horses the fuck out of there. Now, I hope you enjoy her horsing the fuck out of there because... Almost all of this movie will be us looking at horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much all the humans are under fives in this movie. Yeah. Not the horses, but all the humans. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> By the way, we should point out that we got the uh we watched this on Amazon, which means we got German credits, apparently. Yeah. That was weird. It said Sodom und Gomorrah, which is weird on two levels. One, why is it und? And two there's no Gamora. This is just Sodom. Am I, 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 am I nuts? I, I kept wondering, is it like, is it like Champagne Urbana or is it like Budapest? Is, is it one? Is it that? Is that just like? I literally looked it up because I thought, wait, are Sodom and Gomorrah one city? But it turns out no. Gamora is just the redheaded stepchild of Sodomite cities. I don't know. Like it just, <laughs> they, it, it's even, it's actually the same in the Bible. They talk about Sodom and yep. Gomorrah. And like, everything in happens beginning. in Sodom. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no Gomorrah. What the fuck did Gomorrah do? Maybe they were awesome. Maybe they, <laughs> they weren't sinning at all. Yeah. Right. What, like when you commit gomorrah where are you fucking somebody? <laughs> yeah, that was a sex act so obscene. They yeah, couldn't even put that it, it was in the lost Bible. to history. Uh, yeah. See, I was thinking that it was just like a bunch of nerds who couldn't get their debauchery together. They were just like, check out this Chipotle. No sneeze guard. Yeah, what it's actually mean? just D&D. Like. All right. So the narrator tells us all about how wealthy Sodom and Gomorrah were back in the days, but they were also cities of unspeakable vice. And that woman that was sneaking out of the orgies, mm -hmm. apparently she is going up to meet with the king of the Elamites. Now, they're going to call them Helamites through this whole fucking movie. They <laughs> meant Elamites, okay? Oh, I thought, I heard, I was like, was it Helenites? Like, of Helen, <laughs> never mind. And you know you're bad at sneaking out of an orgy? When <laughs> you sneak out of an orgy, you go on a secret spy mission to, like, you know, talk to the Helenites or whatever the hell they are. And then an entire cavalry unit was somehow following you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, okay. So, yeah. And before that happens, we uh, <laughs> we get a very specific warning from the king of the Elamites. As she's wandering off, he yells back at her, be careful of sodomite patrols. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what those are like. <laughs> Here I am on the thought of my patrol. Yes. No. 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 Tasteless. You guys never let me do anything. No, we don't. We, there's a good damn reason why. Had a whole. Uh, I don't even know why. There's a musical that number. Edit like. Yeah. <laughs> just, just stop the, all together. All right, so yeah, the bad guys show up. The sodomite patrol catches her. They pull her off of her horse from behind. So, so far, so good. But then they like, tie her in the front. It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> but they catch her. They get her off her horse, and they, they're going to like rush off to tell the boss, well, a couple of her conspirators are, are here. So they, they're like, oh, we're going to go warn the person she was like on this mission for. I'll go ahead and fill you the fuck in. The queen of... Sodom is in charge. Her brother, the prince of Sodom, wants to kill her and needs the Elamites to help him do that. Double spoiler alert. He will spend 94% of his screen time <laughs> plotting with a new character we've never met to kill his sister. Oh, my God. And then never even try to kill her. <laughs> I yeah. expected him to, like, be in a scene where he taps someone on the leg on the subway. And guy takes out his headphones. I'm trying to kill my sister. <laughs> Oh my sister. You see him talking to one of the horses that's yeah, right, 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 yeah, you. and crafty. <laughs> Look, man, I'm just trying to get lunch, you know. I don't really want to talk politics right now, if that's okay. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, 
the Jews are wandering in the desert like they do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, we meet Melchior, who is the malcontent, right? God, yeah. Jesus, that's probably oh, why they Commander called him Riker? Melchior. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Commander Riker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's going to be the pissy malcontented Jew the whole time. He wants to drink all the water, but Lot will only let the sick people have that water. Or actually, wait, he doesn't even want to drink the water, right? No. Th yeah. This is, I got to say, this was so fucking confusing. I literally thought that this guy was going to be revealed to be like a demon in the guy's mind. You know, because, like, they're just walking through the desert all dying of thirst, right? And, you know, if I'm walking through a desert dying of thirst, I'm going to be like, dude, just stop fucking, why are you talking to me? Like, we're all dying. Here, right? like, guy, right. Yes. He's jumping around like a little goblin. He's like, oh, you want to drink the water? Well, you better drink. <laughs> just cut it open and drink the water. And I was like, is this a, a hallucination? No, just Commander Riker. Yes, yeah, just just, that's what is. He's like the guy in middle school that would try to start fights between two other people. <laughs> he's like yeah. that, but with water. And so he's trying to convince this guy. He's like, I know that that water is reserved for sick people, but why don't you take some anyway? So he does. And Lot shows up. Lot is pissed. Lot is poor man's Charlton Heston, right? Like everything in here will be the cheap knockoff version of the Ten Commandments one, right? I think it's just Mitt Romney. <laughs> yeah, 100% Mitt Romney. And this dude cannot pick a voice. Scene no! to scene. He's like, he, at one point, he's like old Charlton Heston straight up impersonation. Yeah. But sometimes he's just like, like, uh, I don't know. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> he gets Southern in the middle for a second. It's crazy. Yeah. And I love, it, he does such an actory thing where in his Oscar scene, which we'll talk about, <laughs> when he's like sad, he goes into the, oh, oh my. Yeah, you know, like right, that yes, deep yes. trying to be like Gandalf or something, you know, like, <laughs> oh, the the pain I feel like, like you really cannot fucking pick a voice. You're right. Yeah. All right. But he can pick a fucking weapon. And this is the first of many times. <laughs> yes. That we will learn that Lot can kick some fucking ass with a shepherd's crook. Y'all yeah. <laughs> bendy shepherd's crook. Yes. That is his weapon of choice. He turns down far superior weapons at points of this movie. Someone hands him a fucking cannon. He's like, no, I want no, my I have a fucking thing. I do. Hook. It's my idiot. And if you're wondering how long it takes people to run out of shepherd's crook foo moves, uh, <laughs> it's half of One. this fight scene. He's yes. like, aha. And then I grab you with the hook. Oh, that's literally all of them. All right. <laughs> There's like, yeah, seven fight scenes later. Like, what do we do in this one? I, I guess. I don't say fucking grab him that extra. Don't <laughs> fucking say grab him that extra. I'm going to fucking fire you right now. <laughs> so. And the other thing about Mitt Romney or, or Lot Romney, I guess, his fur boots tell me he's cold. <laughs> but his. Not wearing any fucking pants tells me he's hot and it's the desert. So I'm, I'm very confused. Yeah. By far the most revealing outfits is the skirts of the men in this movie. Yeah, are we sure that's not where the uh, X rating came from? Yeah, it could from? be from the balls There's hanging a lot out of the bottom under, of it. Underball. Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, see, I didn't notice the underball for a long time because I was still busy looking at the exact line between black and white of his hair. Right. Like there's yeah. a there's a meridian <laughs> on his head where his hair switches color. It's pretty amazing. I mean, to be fair, he has seen a Holy Ghost. So, OK, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So. All right. So then. So lot <laughs> karate fights with his little crook. He fights Malky or the malcontent and he wins. So then he gives that guy noogies. Right. And says, come on, <laughs> let's go scout out this oasis together. Huh? Huh? Come you on, buddy. scoundrel. Yeah. Trying to stab <laughs> me to death. So you. So Malky or am I right? Classic. I'm going to call you Stabby. That's your new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they go out to this oasis, but it turns out there are already some people there. This is where we're going to meet Ildith, the, the slave of the queen. Yes. And the only reason that I need to point this out is in the background, there is my favorite character in the movie, which I call extra who painted his face but none of the rest of his body i cannot tell you what the fuck happened in the rest of this scene because it's just a guy very clearly trying to hide everything except his face behind the palanquin <laughs> in slow motion so uh, you guys are gonna have to take the reins for this scene because i just watched a guy basically mime his way out of the scene <laughs> all right so i'll give you the basics it's it, so Lot comes up with his scouting party. She's a, a, a slave of the queen and she's got like a whole bunch of other slaves with her. And, and she looks at him and she's like, 
Why didn't we get Jewish actors for this? This is so weird that we wouldn't have like it's Hollywood. We would be able to find some Jews here somewhere. Right. But instead, we have you guys. Why don't you don't even at least have beards for the role? Charlton Heston at least had a beard. Right. And I and I wrote in my notes. I'm like, thank you. I thought it would be anti-Semitic if I asked. But no, they don't have the beards. So this is where they explain that away. Right. Stuart Granger, the, the lot. He goes. Well, I've actually shaved my beard because I'm in mourning for my dead wife. This movie will take place over a several year period, and I will always be clean shaven. So I'm yeah, really broke I was up like, about oh, it. Mitt Romney's wife died, huh? Well, he, he probably has a couple others. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's got backups. He's got spares. Yeah. Well, he's, he's got a fucking folder full of them. So he should only shave like the proportion of his beard that goes for each wife. So oh, there you go. <laughs> And you know he's only got those extra wives so he can get that extra thousand dollars. You know, that's the only reason he's doing it. <laughs> well, he's got to put something in the binder. All right. So they like talk about like, hey, is there any water at this oasis? No, there's not. Would you like salt? Would you like some salt? And he's like that. <laughs> yes, I always drink a nice tall glass of salt. Why would you be offering me salt? I don't. <laughs> and she's like, it's a foreshadowing thing. We're going to do a lot of this. We're going to really. It's just this whole like first two acts are just going to be us going like huh salt huh anyway <laughs> and we also learn here that lot doesn't like slavery at all ah yes it's that part of the bible that we all remember yes! well from, we've all read it where they're vigorously anti-slavery yes wait a minute <laughs> no they're fucking not. lot the abolitionist <laughs> yeah thomas you got to do a second read man you got to do a second read <laughs> yeah. And I would rather die, my friend. Yeah, you- I would rather die. <laughs> if my podcasting career was like, well, your options are do another reading of the Bible, I'd be like, can I, I'll go back and work for the state. I don't know. <laughs> day, uh, time for a day job. <laughs> All right. And so, okay. So now we, we and, and I love the way this scene ends too. She's like, uh, he's like, you know, she says, there's plenty of water in the town I live in. It's just around the corner. He says, really? What town's that? And she goes, it's called <laughs> Sodom. And there's like a burp, burp, I wrote in my notes, did you hear that trumpet sting when you said the name of your town? (laughs) (laughs) Never a good sign. But it's also, did she do, oh, and Gamora. And Gamora. Gamora. I also live in Gamora. What, do you have like a little apartment downtown there too? Yeah, there's sister cities. The high schools are really, there's rivalry. (laughs) We're pretty big sex rivals, let me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we we cut, so we, when we, I love this, because we do the Sodom, Thing, and they're like, what's the We Like Being Alive song equivalent of <laughs> We Are Sodomites Who Sin or whatever? And then it's literally guys having conversations that are like, oh, we'll always sin forever and nothing <laughs> will ever happen to us. I know it's so great. I love sinning. But, and then, but of course, there's one guy there that doesn't love sinning. Yeah. So we meet this angry preacher that's screaming at everybody about how one day God will destroy their sinful city because of all its sinful slavery ways. Right. Yep. And. I have to point this out because it's my favorite moment in the entire goddamn movie. He says something about the, they're still leaning into the whole salt thing. And he's like, you're destroying and, and monopolizing the greatest commodity in all of Africa. <laughs> Africa! <laughs> God, they, they're at the Jordan River later. You, I mean, I know you filmed this in Africa, but that's not where the fucking story takes <laughs> I just love that he's fucking slaying this open mic. Because like they're, they, they're, this happened several times in the movie yes. where the director told the collection of extras from every which country, you know, you got a guy with like an Italian, hey, it's a me, you know, yeah. like just all the, every random accent you can get. And they're like, okay, here's the scene, extras and horses, listen up. This, he's saying stuff and you think it's ridiculous. So the way they portray that is he'll say like, Oh, you guys are sinning. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But they're all just down at the comedy cellar. <laughs> they just laugh absurdly. At, and he's like, oh, yeah, thank you. I've had this my time. Tip your camels, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. But so like the guards show up, they're very upset about this. So they they whip him to death. They're like, we're in Asia, you fucking idiot. It's Asia. <laughs> I guess if we're looking at the weaponry in this movie and we're kind of grading it on, I don't know, like hit or not hit points, but like attack points or whatever. If a shepherd's crook is apparently a lethal weapon, a whip is like insanely lethal because he gets whipped 
two times twice and he's instantly like, dead yeah. yep yep they throw him in the dead cart they're like well that's two whips no they human being the bring out your dead cart. yes they do they totally fucking do and i gotta ask something i no i'm not a salt mining expert uh-huh, i imagine right. you are just because you know everything about everything you were around when is, it was currency yeah. I was around when that is, salt was formed. Yes, is is salt mined via group Peloton? Is that <laughs> normally, so that's what the movie. <laughs> well, that's how you run the guys. conveyor gonna, belts. The so conveyor they didn't big, have like, salt mine Peloton. They didn't have. And then out gasoline. comes salt. Somehow? Yes, like, exactly. Like, no, that's you that ran the conveyor belts from underground. It was a whole yeah. thing. It was a whole thing. So yeah, so they toss him in the cart full of dead bodies. Good thing that that was going by at that moment. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the fucking it's time for some sexy dancing. It will often be time for some sexy dancing. My my notes here is just like, wow, eight Middle Eastern chicks and a very fit black dude, all scantily clad. Christian movies used to be so much better. Okay. The male cheerleader that is included in this particular <laughs> dance number makes it my favorite of the entire movie because he's doing his own dance. Yeah, he right? totally There's is. Eight, yes. eight people belly dancing, and then that guy's just sort of like duh, 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 doing a little robot. He's <laughs> macaroning in the background. It's like an extra wandered on set, and they were like, are you kidding? This film is 13 cents a roll. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, and like many of the uh, sexy dancing scenes in this movie that are 20 minutes long for no fucking reason. They were like, hey, this could really just be like 30 seconds or maybe it's in the back. Nope, they already choreographed an entire mm-hmm. dance. And I'm, I'm, are you going to tell them they can't do it? I'm not telling them they can't do it. And so therefore we have 15 minutes of dancing every single time. We do. Yeah. No, like literally like over and over again, it's like three fucking minutes that these scenes last. <laughs> Yeah. And they, the one black guy really brings out just how fucking white all these actors are. <laughs> I really, they should have just gotten a guy with a tan or something and been like, that's, that's the black guy. That's <laughs> our know. baseline you're, for you're black. casting white people as Middle Easterners, what it was. Uh. Oh, and then, okay, so the, we leave there that we follow the prince. He's plotting against his sister with another random character because it's a scene with him in it. Yep. Right. And he's just like, oh, my sister's such a lady with such a lady brain. She'll never be able to be a good monarch like I could. And this this is where we get the upskirt shot. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, right? they're standing over the dungeon yeah. there. This is certainly my first upskirt video with two dudes that I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that was the first for me. All right. Well. Stop blocking me on Facebook and you'll see way more. (laughs) Also, I want to point out that one of the characters in this scene, I forget if it's the prince or the guy he's plotting with, has a boob crown. So (laughs) this movie has decided that the symbol for Sodom is a lady with her arms in the air whose cat dog style attached to, I assume, not a lady. Oh, this is fantastic. It's a close up of his face. So you just see like a lady with her boobs out and her arms in the air as his crown. Okay, I think this is a perfect Rorschach test because I have the exact same thing. We are getting a close-up of this cardboard crown that the guy is wearing. And I see in it, and this is going to be probably reveal about me, something about me. I see a dude giving birth to another dude out of his butt. That's what I am. So, <laughs> Noah, what, what did you see? I reveal your psychology to I, us. Honestly, I didn't notice this at all. I was too busy uh, yeah. enjoying the upskirt. That's fine. So I will say there were a ton of background boobs in this, right? Like every time somebody would stop, there'd be like a carved boob in the background. A lot of Egyptian nipples here. <laughs> so now they, I guess w- that girl that was plotting with the Elamites earlier or Hellenites or whatever, we, we can change the name as we go. The movie didn't yeah. have a problem with that. She's been captured, and now the queen is trying to torture some information out of her. She wants to know who sent her to go to the Elamites in the first place. I love it because so she the queen's down there in the torture dungeon. She's like, "Quiet!" <laughs> I said, "Quiet, everyone! This is a torture dungeon. Use your inside voices. Inside voices." This would be my favorite movie in the world if the queen had just come in and started flicking the lights, <laughs> We're clapping in a pattern. She's just like. Yeah, <laughs> so, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what her name is, but she's like, "Quiet!" I said, "Quiet." Do you do do you hear me? No movie time later. Yes, Miss Wilson. There's like people like hanging on the wall and stuff. <laughs> so and oh, all right, now this is the torture is so 
needlessly elaborate here. They have a blind guy and he's wearing an outfit with spikes on it, but the spikes go in when he inhales and come out when he exhales. They seriously mad libbed a torture. The, <laughs> they like, totally did. Oh, and the guy could be now. blind. Why was he blind? Why does that matter? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What, what, I have it's no idea. so good. It's, it's fantastic. I was. This is where this movie won me over to being god awful. <laughs> yes. Also, like because they don't actually show any of the like goriness or blood or anything. What we actually watch is a guy sort of halfway stumble towards this lady, give her a hug, and then like dramatic shots of people reacting to that hug. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then else we we get a scene where like the queen is having some of her sl- like so that lady dies without giving any information. We have a scene where the, the queen's having some of her slaves branded and she's asking her brother about the Jews, like, right? Like the news of the Jews coming has, has reached her through her slave and the queen's brother is not a fan. <laughs> but she's excited like like they're a new toy. She's like, oh, I want to <laughs> see a Jew. Bring me a Jew. Bring me a Jew. <laughs> uh, you know what? Tell them that there's a panic and that everyone needs to stay inside. Then we'll get to see a bunch of them. Bring them over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the the brother, by the way, is Doctor Strange. Yes, he it's is absolutely. How much he looks like Doctor Strange? Absolutely. And I've also concluded that the main reason this queen has slaves is so that she can force them to follow her around and pretend to listen intently to her monologuing. <laughs> yeah. like, she's monologues, and the slave is like, "Oh, this is worth it." Like, oh, f- oh yeah, oh yeah. She's monologues forever. <laughs> the slaves got everything. Like maybe. Maybe I go hug that spike guy. Maybe that's better. Is that better? Ah, I don't know. And so this just finishes off with, uh, with, this is great. As far as they could get into lesbian sex yes! in 1962, which is just the chalice drinking part. I assume there's always a chalice involved. I mean, there is in the, the lesbian porn island. But anyway, yeah, it's absolutely. the chalice. Yep. That's the first thing they get to. And then they're like, that's too much lesbian sex already. Well, look, cut. the fact that these two women looked longingly in each other's eyes got yes. them an X rating in the UK. So, yes, <laughs> exactly. Right. Not the part where the brother and sister are playing weird sex games. That's fine. It's a guy and a girl. No, well, yeah, no, this scene is why Marsha's grandpa shot a hole in the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. And now we cut, we cut over to back over to the blot and, and his wandering Jews. And I've got to point this scene out because I know we always are saying like, oh, and then this thing was so ugly or this thing was so crappy. The river in this movie is shitty. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Like they got a, like a really I know you're thinking. Yeah. How can a fucking river be shit? I swear to you, 19 minutes, 37 seconds, it's on Amazon Prime. Tell me that isn't a shitty river. Oh, the real river definitely backed out of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting. I talked to my agent, and uh, this is the points I'm getting on this are bullshit, so fuck you. <laughs> Go find yourself a creek. I'm a river. <laughs> you know when you grow up in suburbia and someone opens a hydrant and it's super fun, but then... The entire rest of the day, it's just like a muddy slurry yeah. all over your street. <laughs> yes. That was that they chose for the Jordan River. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's so fucking awful. But all the Jews are very excited to see it. So they all go and bathe and drink out of the same still river. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted one yeah. guy to be at the very top taking a shit. Come on, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> you saw everyone else was doing the bathing and drinking thing. And if you think it couldn't get any worse, you get the sodomites who are like, hey, do you mind if we dump? Dump all these dead bodies right next to the only yes. clean drinking water for a thousand miles. Okay, yes. good. Dumping them right here. Yeah, apparently this is the dead body cart drop off spot as well. <laughs> yeah. And the the Jews don't even care. Lot notices all the dead bodies, and he's not. And he and he doesn't say like, guys, maybe we want, we want to drink from upstream a bit or anything. <laughs> No, uh, this is also where one of the sodomites says they've built the city of Sodom out of slave flesh and. I feel like that was going to get ooky. Just want to say right now, that's probably going to get ooky after the first or second building. <laughs> no, lay still. Lay still, damn it. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's the guy that comes across. That guy that got whipped to death earlier wasn't yeah. quite dead. Somehow survived both wow. of those whip strikes. <laughs> yeah. They're like, don't worry. You'll be all right. You're actually just a giant fucking baby. You're totally fine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a soccer player? Come on, man. Get up. So, yeah, okay. (laughs) Meanwhile, the Sodomite army is on the move, which is nowhere near as sexy as I'm making it sound. (laughs) But the queen has come out. She wants to meet with these Hebrews, and she's going to offer them a deal. She's like, you can have this area as long as, you know, 
if a Helamite army ever shows up or something, you kill them. And the Jews are like, yeah, that sounds like a great deal for us. Great. Sounds like a great deal. (laughs) Well, but in order to have this little uh, detente or whatever you call it, they insist on carrying Mitt Romney across the river. And he's like, okay, but only if you carry me like I just threw the game winning touchdown for BYU. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they did, they put him on like, yeah, Mitt Romney. And they carry across. And then they get, <laughs> they get, uh, to seal the deal, they give him a horse because they're like, this is what we have more than anything else on this. Apparently, like, yeah. <laughs> here's a horse. And I was like, oh, but that's a Trojan horse. There's a bunch of Jews that are going to jump out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, that's not. Never mind. Sorry. Different, different thing. Um, and, and the queen's like, oh, you got me. I also got you a present, too. Uh, <laughs> I got you my slave right here, Ildith. She's a named character already. <laughs> yeah. And this is where in my version of this. So the slave is like, fuck, no, I fucking hate Mitt Romney. I'm not going with him. Look at his ridiculous skirt and his legs that are, you know, like she's she does not want to go. She's a slave, and she's like, I would rather be a slave than go to Mitt Romney. And then meanwhile, Mitt Romney's like, oh, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's against our principles anyway. Like, I, I definitely wasn't even going to take even, your fuck yeah, slave. I didn't even. I don't, I don't want a slave. Want, I have binders, fact, we're totally binders full of women at home. I don't know. if. You- and I'm pretty sure that's the entire origin of their anti-slave stance, was just like a <laughs> series of slaves that didn't want to go. With, with <laughs> not, like, like, you know what? I'm against Wait, slavery. Actually. I wanted to go to my room anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You would look terrible in long sleeves and a jean skirt in the desert anyway. So I don't even know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. But ultimately, I guess he takes the fox slave. And the queen's brother also, by the way, wants to fuck one of Lot's daughters, uh, both of Lot's daughters, w- as we'll find out. But just one so far. Everybody. That's <laughs> guy. Th- he Dr. Strange wants to fuck. And that's why he's called Dr. Strange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get a happy little tabernacle building uh, montage. We see that Idris is settling in well. She's already complaining about her clothes. So she's a Jewish wife already. <laughs> Is it, this is where she they have an argument about slavery and she's 100 percent right. I love it. That, that <laughs> yes. happens a lot. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're against slavery. And he's like, yep, we're against slavery. Anyway, go do this mandatory work. Yep. And uh, by the way, I'm going to beat my daughter for misbehaving real quick right in front of you. But we're no slavery. Don't worry. Yeah. No slavery for men. Right. That's exactly because yeah. <laughs> she's just like, you know, the way you treat women is just like slavery. I'm like, exactly correct. Wait, why are we yep. moving on? Yeah. And then, so now keep in mind when, when the slave, when, uh, the queen gave Lot this slave, she's wearing this like super crazy sexy silk dress. And now they put her in this awful like burlap dress or whatever. Potato bag. Yeah. (laughs) But like itchy potato bag. Yeah. But like she still had that dress. So they stole her shit. Like the one article of clothing, the one item that she owned, they stole and gave her an inferior version. Fuck y'all. Yeah, nothing says you're free. Like, here, put on these clothes I'm making you wear. <laughs> and give me all of your belongings. I won't give them back. As a matter of fact, my fucking yeah. daughter's going to come in here in a second dressed in your dress. Yeah, hence the uh, the abuse I just mentioned. She comes in, hey, look at this dress I found. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> and Lot, the hero, the one good man in Sodom, strikes his daughter for dressing mm-hmm. immodestly. He, yep. okay. Mitt Romney, the actor, hits whoever this woman is so hard. It looks pretty it, bad. It's a hard cut, and it's a different actress. Just like, hello. <laughs> oh. I just, like, my notes are just, wow, 1962, fuck you. <laughs> just fuck you. All right, so you remember how they carried Lot across the, the river earlier? <laughs> the two slaves that carried him, while they're carrying him, they're like, hey, man, if we, like, escape and come to you, do we get to not be slaves anymore? And he's like, totally, totally. All you got to do is get here, and uh, we will uh, give you sanctuary. We'll assign you a sack to wear. <laughs> are you asking if the Jews are safe? Because, yes, the Jews are base. We yeah, are base. Yes, we have in decided. the game of slavery tag, <laughs> we are base. <laughs> um, so in the very next scene, of course, those two slaves have escaped and they're running to the finish line, the, the river where they can be safe. I'm glad you explained that because I really had no fucking idea what was happening. <laughs> I saw a commotion like people. Horse, there's some horseplay, like literal horseplay <laughs> and also 
people horsing around in a river. I was like, is this bad? I don't, I can't tell this fucking movie. Yeah, no, I, I, no I figured that all out in retrospect, but yeah, like yeah. fucking. And then of course the prince, the queen's brother shows up, Dr. Strange. And he's like, give me back those slaves. And lots like, don't make me throw down a more crook foo on your ass. I can use this thing like a vaudevillian stage manager, motherfucker. <laughs> And indeed, they do. They yep. have another crook foo another fight. Another where- crook fight. This is not the last crook foo fight. It is not. This is where he. Yeah, this is the one where he crook foos him off the horse, yep. mm-hmm. and that is treated like it's Christopher Reeve. Like he, <laughs> yes. he falls. Yes, and it's like over. All he did was pull him off of the crook, and the guy's dead. Like he's just like, <laughs> I'll never walk again. It's like I've been whipped <laughs> twice here or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, and and then they turn to the other guards and they're like, all right, well, he's unconscious. Now we will nurse him back to health. You can have him at the end of the semester. <laughs> you can so have him. Back. You shouldn't have been on our side of the river anyway. I wanted the guards to be like, we we can take him. We got him. You <laughs> you don't need to nurse him back to health. That's a weird offer. We'll just <laughs> he's royalty. Okay. I insist. I'm going to. I No, I insist. My nubile <laughs> daughter just... shall nurse him back to health. <laughs> So then we get his his daughter nursing him back to health. So he wakes up, the the Stretcher Strange does, as the daughter's nursing him back to health and goes full fucking Pepe Le Pew on her. I know. I know. But they, but he also, so I this is what I had to figure out. I suppose we're supposed to believe that time has passed. But the, this movie does this frequently, where it, time doesn't pass. There's nothing that tells you time has passed. But you start learning it by the dialogue. He's like, oh, yes, every night you're in here. Oh, yeah. oh fucking time. is Now you tell there me. There have been I, I multiple this, nights. I see now. Yeah, yeah, like I literally half the scene. I thought you just got knocked out by the crook. <laughs> crook foo. And now, oh, OK, you've been here a while for as you lay out. No fucking reason. Like there's a can you you can just be nursed back to health in your own hometown. You know, probably better this. that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he's talking to, I don't know what he says. He's like, I hear you every night. And I'm like, oh, is she masturbating in the other room? Because that is the only <laughs> way this what, makes sense, yeah. right? I yeah. just, I want to say, though, the pickup line of, do you like how soft my skin is? It's kind of my thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's impressive. He's like, come on, feel me. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. I well, never wash my hands. <laughs> because it's 1962, every single sexual whatever you call it in this movie starts as a sexual assault. Yes. I mean, it just, it just does. <laughs> yep. And I don't know, like, of course, of course, by our standards, it's all sexual assault, but I don't know, like from the movie's point of view, it's actually very confusing. Like, I don't know, is this merely a sexual assault in the movie or is it in the movie? Or is it like, Oh no, it turns consensual. Cause that's how women are, you know? Yes. That, but that's the thing in all of the movies back then. It was, that was, that was what, was seen as like the modest, like every woman should resist at first because she's modest or whatever, but then succumb. But then totally get into it after like enough of it. Right. It's so <laughs> confused. Yeah. So, so like the men built the system where it's like you could never really tell if you were raping her. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. This is also where she says, Why do you smell so good? And I was like, Please say it's from eating poop. Please say it's from <laughs> eating poop. But no, they'll never get the poop eating into this movie. So Bastard. you're holding out for the poop eating. Just. Yeah. Be ready to be disappointed. And also we get another awkward cut because they, again, this is what I don't know whether it's supposed to be a sexual assault or not. Can't tell because of the, the 60s. And then you get a smash cut to him riding full speed on his horse away. <laughs> I was like, wow. Imagine being so bad at sex that just in the middle of it, a dude is just Bow! like he's in the <laughs> fucking Kentucky Derby just riding away. <laughs> See, I wrote in my notes, men, right? They hug you with their horse whip and then they leave you. Classic. <laughs> yeah, but we're supposed to assume that they fucked and then he horsied off the next Are day. Are we? I, okay, I guess. Well, well, later they will have fucked, so yeah. Okay. But, like, the god-awful movies canon is that the two of those, uh, those two characters <laughs> fucked. Okay. And then he ran off while she wasn't looking. Like, you know, she went up to, like, clean up or whatever, and he was on his horse when she came back. So now, like, Lot and his people are hard at work turning their desert into a farm, which apparently is mostly about synchronized basket carrying, yep. right? Mm. Also, I really appreciated the people who can't do business before their spoken lines moment here of 1960s. <laughs> Someone walks up to Lot with a rock. He very clearly says to them, yes, that's a rock. It is good. And then they walk away. <laughs> That'll do. That has all the rock properties we're looking for. 
the slave lady has given Lot's daughter a pedicure. I'm not exaggerating. A fucking <laughs> pedicure. Lot doesn't want the slave lady whoring his daughter up, though, right? Like, my daughter's toenails are pretty enough. Well, yeah, she's painting her toenails with a celery stock, Yep, I guess. <laughs> like you do. And then he's like, how dare you? My daughter is incredibly attractive without that. In fact, she's really... No, I should stop talking. I should stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do a couple uh, of shots. Let me show you how hot she can get. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. God. And then, so the slave girl is like, well, let me see your hands, Mitt Romney. <laughs> and she's like, ooh, these hands. You, you have the hands of a chronic masturbator. No. I mean, <laughs> your pops are so hairy. <laughs> yeah, she starts reading his palms, and then he's like, oh, that's, come on, that's bullshit. Anyway, about Jehovah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. And I just probably wrote this down many times, but I just, it bears repeating. Why? Why is this skirt so short? Just, <laughs> it's so short. This is, so short. this is also the, you're too chicken to fuck me scene. Yep. From the yep. wife. <laughs> and he basically is like, I can't stay here. I'm going to go fuck Ishmael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what about my short skirt tells you I'm super straight? Like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, you know, if I spend the night with you, then people will talk and there will be some rumors. So I'm going to go spend the night with a young man. Anywho, I just imagine, imagine getting the classroom boner in that skirt. Like, oh. if that's the dress code and you get the fucking you're in class, you know, and get the bone. You know, let's, let's be honest. That's, that's happened. Yeah. In high school. <laughs> Imagine. How would you even where would you put that fucking thing? Right. It's true. It's true. You'd have, have to, you'd have to carry back you'd, then. You'd have to buffalo bill it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we get to see where the Queen's brother has gone to the Elamites and he's like, Hey, can we get the uh the plot going? And the Elamites are like, dude, we have a whole little horsey dance that we're doing. <laughs> no, we absolutely cannot. <laughs> we have to not only are we giving you, he says something like, oh, we threw together this quick horse dance for you for in your honor, you know, and not only does it happen that entire scene, the quick thrown together horse dance, every time we yes. go back to them, like they're always <laughs> doing little horsey they dances. Will, they will take a second crack at a horse dance. And to be fair, they should, because this horse dance is fucking garbage. <laughs> It's shot from 18 miles away. There's trash bags in the middle or something. <laughs> I have no it's idea what nothing. those piles were. And it's it's like PE class for, you know, like middle schoolers. That's all it is. They're like, oh, can you walk in a line? Yep. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> and, and so we cut. Yeah, it must have been like we come back months later, you know, or whatever. And the, and the Doctor Strange is coming back. Oh, he's back. Hey, we have a chance to fix the yeah, horse dance we right, fucked up. Come right. on. Hey, everybody, get in line. And they do it again. Like, every time they go back there, they're doing that horse dance. It's fantastic. So, and he says, like, oh, well, are we ready to overthrow my sister? And he's like, what about all of these Jews that just moved in? And Dr. Strange is like, oh, they're a bunch of whooshies. And then the Elamite king is like, oh, didn't they whip your ass with a uh, shepherd's crook? He's like, fuck, man, fuck you. You know that's <laughs> different. That was different. <laughs> Fucker. He had a shepherd's crook. That's cheating. Yeah. Such a good <laughs> weapon. Great. He knew the crook food. They the don't tell you how to counter that. All the weapons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, we get this great scene where the, we cut in on the queen and she's playing catch the ruby yep. in the bathtub. Hot tub gem eating contest. <laughs> what? Bo I bobbing for jewelry? <laughs> this is the debauchery that they could show in 1962. I love it Got so a nice much. Platter of gems to throw at you people in the hot tub. I thought, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. All right, so of course, and then the brother shows up and he's conspiring with his conspirators because it's a scene with him in it. Well, she walks in and catches them in the room. Yeah. And they're like playing D&D &D, and she's yes! like, you fucking nerds. Get to work. <laughs> She's like, oh, you have all my generals together in this room. What you doing? And he's like, playing, playing Cones of Dunshire. Just, just a good game of Cones of Dunshire. <laughs> yep. so, Definitely not plotting a feeble attempt to overthrow you. If, if I was sure. trying to not. do that at some point in this goddamn movie, I'd make an attempt on your life, wouldn't I? So it couldn't be that. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. And then it's time for the incestuous knuckle biting. Oh, my God. What the fuck was uh yeah. Uh, yeah there's just this weird moment where she like nibbles his finger and he nibbles hers and then she gets mad for him not being turned on enough by the <laughs> what the fuck was going on there i always want to have been in the room 
when they just suggested, you know? Yeah. <laughs> everybody made this suggestion. <laughs> hey, what if we do this? And then everybody must have been th- maybe it's the director or something, and so they have all the power. Right. And everybody yeah. must have been thinking like, what the what the fuck, fuck is he doing? <laughs> Does he do this with his sister? No or question. Like, what? Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. Robert Aldrich walked up to him and said, you know how when your sisters and brothers get together, they all bite each other's knuckles and they have this, uh, a, all that in sexual a tension. sexual yes. way. <laughs> Someone definitely gave away their kink here. Yeah, they were like, I mean, obviously knuckle biting, right? Oh, uh, no, nobody? Yeah, I don't know why right. I saw it in a movie. No, I didn't, because that would be cheating. We, I knuckle you don't <laughs> so, look it's sodom okay they're so sinful uh that they fuck their siblings yeah, like you know I, I was they run out of knuckle, other people to fuck of non-siblings fighting. so definitely yeah. gotta, knuckles you know no my knuckles yeah. all right you guys you know, are well i hate to say this but the queen catching this character in the act of his plot that ultimately amounts to nothing ultimately amounts to nothing so we're gonna <laughs> pause for even more eye roll calisthenics but we'll be back in a minute with even more the last days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Beware of Sodom, for its cities are built of the flesh of slaves. Johnson, how's the new aqueduct coming? Uh, honestly, not great. Really? This is supposed to be finished by the sex festival. Yeah, uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. Human bodies are terrible building material. Okay, uh, yeah, I hear that. And, and, and thank you for uh bringing that challenge to the workplace. I'm uh, I'm uh I'm excited to hear your solution. You've been reading management books again, haven't you, man? Well, what no. No, that's that's just how I talk. Okay. Look, can you maybe use fatter guys maybe? I, just, I don't know, let me let me ask. Steve? Steve? What do you want? Do we have any fatter guys? I <sighs> Not, not really. No, I, these are all. They were slaves, so uh, not a lot of plenty. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like there's a no go on the fatter guys. Are you sure we can't just use bricks? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I uh, I hear your solution, and I'm glad you're bringing a problem solving energy <laughs> to this pinch point. But I want us to continue to work laterally. When never mind. Um, it's fine. It's fine. I'll I'll use the bodies. and we're back and we're going to rejoin lot and his fellow hebrews putting together their this like mysterious work of masonry that the queen really must know what is you know anyway that's like a subplot and then along comes the salt version of the ice cream truck right (laughs) and hey Realism here, the Jews are responding to free stuff how I remember them doing uh, from my days at FAO. So it's realistic. I was just thinking, like, whoever the salesman is that got everybody hooked onto salt is worth his weight in salt. I guess. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah really, they're really fucking all oh, salt. <laughs> they are really salt. excited. I can't imagine yeah. thirsty desert people being this excited about salt. So, yeah, yeah the marketing yeah. is bang up. And then, okay, so then we've got Dr. Strange shows up and he's just like, uh, he, he goes to Ildeth, the, the slave, and he's like, damn it, lady, have you even seduced Lot yet? I, like, we gave you to him <laughs> months ago or weeks. We really no, we have no sense of how long anything's been, but we gave you a while ago, earlier in the movie. Seduce him and figure shit out already, damn it. It's like the two actors are unsure about what their motivations are because he's like, yeah. what have you found in your spying? And she's like, wait, I'm a spy? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, w- I was going to say, I've watched this whole movie. I, st- I don't know. Was that a plan? Like, did they? <laughs> right. Did, like, yeah. Because she was the she was the queen's sex slave. Right. So I don't know that she's super into the. Nothing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Why know. wouldn't Never you mind. just tell C three PO that it was a it was all a ploy? And <laughs> I, I don't. I don't fucking get it. Anyway, but then fucking the the brother, uh, Doctor Strange, he's got to go rape Lot's daughter now. Rape, seduce, love. Yeah. We don't something. know. <laughs> Genuinely, don't know what the movie was going for. Yeah, right, that. right, exactly. Because it starts as a sexual assault that may then later be consent. I who the yeah. Anyway. Like, I want to make very clear, objectively, it's sexual assault. Oh, but absolutely. I don't know what absolutely, they were yes. going for. Like, right. that's yeah. what we're I don't... not confused. The movie's yeah, yeah. confused. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, good clarification. 
and oh, I love this too. So he's he's going after her, Doctor Strange is, and, and he's like, oh, where did she go? And Malkior, the malcontented Jew from the beginning, is like, oh, are you looking to rape Plot's daughter? She went left, left <laughs> over this away. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so he follows her, and Ildith sees that, or like hears her screaming for help or whatever, goes, gets Lot. So Lot comes and catches Doctor Strange in the act of attempting to what, rape his daughter. <laughs> and crook guess food? what, everybody? <laughs> it's a shepherd's crook fight. He cocks his crook or so, <laughs> you know, he's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and again, we cannot emphasize enough that every single crook foo fight in this movie will be I... Identical. <laughs> <laughs> and they try to throw in some sort of jujitsu thing in that there's something in his footwork that I think is the key to his success. You know, like the camera <laughs> very in every fight, like he's losing, he's losing every time, like losing, losing. Mm -hmm. And the camera shows his feet and he does this magical jujitsu, like he just slides his foot back a little bit. And then that's when you know that he's doing the magical crook fu move, that finishing move. Yeah, I guess. yeah, it's I de it's definitely the turning the hat backwards of this film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you expect the the other guy, Doctor Strange, to be like, "Oh, I didn't know we could move our feet." Oh, <laughs> oh damn it, oh. damn it! Well, I should go again. We should get to go again. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, but it, it, he runs Doctor Strange off, and then he goes to thank Ildith. He's like, "That was so nice of you to tell me that guy was raping my daughter. That was so sweet of you. I didn't expect." That. <laughs> yeah, is it Valentine's yeah. Day? Yeah, right. <laughs> Very nice gift. And then, of course, th this character Ishmael, who's been a half ass kind of character throughout, apparently now he wants to marry Lot's daughter. I never figured out which of the daughters. Nor did I. <laughs> Same, honest. I think that's why Doctor Strange ends up fucking both of them, just because he no one can tell them apart. It was, look, it was an honest mistake. It was an honest mistake. Yeah, I right, didn't right, exactly. Promise, I only meant to fuck one of your daughters <laughs> non-consensually. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so now we have this scene of Lot and Elda together, right? Because there's been sexual tension uh, between them the whole time, I guess. I guess. And they have this dramatic scene where he's falling in love with her, and she's like hanging clothes on a clothesline, and he keeps like dramatically pulling the thing that she just hung off to the side, but he does that like three times. So it kind of, it loses its punch after the first time is all I'm saying. Yeah. Again, in 1962, the best way to hit on a woman was annoy the fuck out of her. I guess like just yep. fucking wet willy. Like just like, all this <laughs> stuff, you know, like just a montage of him putting whoopee oh, cushions something on your shirt. Oh, got you in the face. <laughs> Like trying to do chores, he like sticks out his foot. She trips. Ah, <laughs> marry me, I guess. I <laughs> yep, but that's where it all goes. He he wants her to marry him. Yeah, and they do a 1960s smush face, <laughs> closed yep. mouth kiss. The yep. first of many. Yeah, he just kisses the objections right out of her when she says no. <laughs> uh, all right, so then we we cut to Malkior. He's going to Sodom to sell out his tribe, right? <laughs> and this scene is so nothing, right? He's like, Melchior, why do you sell out the Hebrews? And he's like, I don't know. I heard you guys have like butt stuff. And they're like, we do have butt stuff. It's true. We, have butt <laughs> we stuff. are kind of known here. for our butt stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and this is also where they learn that the mysterious masonry thing that they were building, it wasn't a temple. It was a dam. Damn it. That land will be worth way more now, yeah, there's no way they could have sussed that out, by the way. <laughs> right. It's impossible to know that you were building a dam. Right. <laughs> what oh, is they... this wall like object you are building that is stopping the river? I can't yeah, know until right, you're right. done. Why are they building this temple and why are they building it in the middle of the river? Like, yes, yeah, it was be kind yeah. of obvious. <laughs> yeah. In retrospect, we should have, we should have known. That temple's going to flood. Those guys are idiots. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, and, th and then this is where Lot shows up. So apparently the Sodomites had come in and got some of the slaves that they sprung, right? Mm -hmm. And Lot has come to bargain with the queen to get them back. Yes, and this is, I love this in movies, because what happens is Lot goes in, and then the queen does uh, the good old, like, evil bad guy, evil queen thing, where she does the two claps, like, you know? Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> I always love this, because the slaves bring him a pillow and a something... I was. I want to see the scene where they plot out what the claps mean. Like, you know, does she do two? And <laughs> someone just bashes him over the head. No, that's one clap. That's one oh. clap. Fucking, God damn Sorry, it. You know? I missed clap practice this week. What do you want? That's why you come to clap practice. That is why you come to clap practice. 
<laughs> All of a sudden, they have like more than five things. It gets weird. It's just like, yeah. oh, you want me to bring you our finest translator and a glass of wine? Hold up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, she's like, wait, wait till she stops. So Did you count? I said, hold on, I had seven. Did you count? Was eight? that was that three <laughs> longs and one short? God damn it! I swear it was eight. Okay, I'll uh, let's do both. Okay, I'll cut off one of his arms and you bring him a glass, a half a glass of wine. Is that <laughs> so? That'll work. But yeah, so they're arguing about whether she's going to give the slaves back. He's like, I will totally move the fuck away if you don't give me back the slaves. And and she does the whole go ahead and see if I care. Thing, but she totally yeah. cares right mm-hmm. i love to we get a good scene where it's like she's like okay leader to leader that god shit is nonsense right like you <laughs> it's pretty good it's a pretty good shtick though i gotta hand it to you it's a good shtick but like come on i mean you know, it's just between us that. she's ready to be the prime minister of canada <laughs> <laughs> all right so now the prince goes back to the elamites they have another horse dance parade <laughs> what about this horse dance huh <laughs> oh, jesus christ this is also where the Elamite king names his price, but it's in salt units, so there's no fucking stake. He goes, we want one year worth of salt. And everyone in the room is like, oh, ah! yeah. but you watching the movie are like, I don't know how much this a year of salt is, man. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah, like doing the math on like how often I use salt. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, a little bit, a handful per day. Yeah, maybe? right. right. Like, what, count if it's already in another food product and then also by the way the <laughs> elamite king tells the prince here he's like hey man you, we're, we'll attack the city but you have to kill your sister yourself this will never amount to anything in nope. the movie will never happen no nope. they never attack the city nothing and also it means that i'm not doing anything because the whole thing is <laughs> killing your sister you've already got all the generals on your side clearly you guys were all playing fucking dungeons and dragons earlier anyway <laughs> And by the way, somewhere in the midst of this, we do see a quick, like, the queen walks away to something. She does two claps, and then a slave comes. And so now two claps means come take orders? Like, come on, I'm trying to figure out the <laughs> system. Uh, it's like in a in a space movie where they do the same beepity boops on the computer every time. It does a different thing. It's bothering me. Yeah, no, it's it's claps over your right versus your left shoulder. That's what's fucking up. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, now we have, we cut over to Lot and Ildith getting married. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> if if weddings equal lots of palm leaves or something, then I guess. Yeah. Okay. Sure. It's a, yeah. They're right. getting some right. kind of palm fronding done to them or whatever. Yeah, I thought they were just getting fanned. Like people were just, oh, you look warm. Like, oh, I guess that's a wedding. And yeah, they've got to shake hand with all the named characters and some of the non-named ones, really. Yeah. Like we can't, <laughs> you don't want to just skip through all of that. Oh. And one of them has a wedding gift of like some bread and a bowl of ranch dressing. By the way, I was like, "Oh, that's nice of the, I see you." I see. I thought that was a bowl of salt until they just started eating. It is eating a bowl of salt. It probably is, it? is a bowl. Of are salt. Are they just sitting there eating handfuls of salt? It's a bowl of salt, and she eats a handful of it. And the actress, they very clearly gave her actual salt because the actress is like, "I think, oh, oh man, I really I thought that would be." I won't taste anything until Wednesday now. But it's, you know, it's her wedding, so she's got to pretend. Mm, oh, there's mm, fan, oh, fantastic salt. Oh, <laughs> yeah, really hit the spot. that guy is definitely the person who went outside of the registry for you. <laughs> Yeah, she's like trying to, she's like passive aggressively. Hey, yeah, oh, that's weird. I don't, did, hun, did you put salt on did the you registry? Put a big, I don't did you put a bowl of salt I on the registry? A bowl no. of salt on the registry that I remember. Mm, thank you so much, though. Now we get to carry things home from the wedding. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> but now, okay, so, but now at that exact moment, the big ass Helamite horse army is coming. So the yulating old lady brigade sounds the alarm. <laughs> And this brings in probably my favorite character in the entire film, the lady who lied about being able to do that tongue thing, <laughs> who is third from last. <laughs> right? I, I know that's a real thing, so like, not to make fun of that, but the third lady very clear was just like, oh, the tongue thing? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 what are you guys doing? <laughs> do, 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 do. I, uh, yeah, that when the fourth lady received the signal, I wanted her so badly to just be like, 
I mean, I think she's giving us a signal. I don't know. Francine lied on her fucking resume. <laughs> <laughs> she, like, starts trying to do it. Do, 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 uh, do, horses! Horses are coming! <laughs> Wait, this is so it's much more efficient. Why didn't we just yell, horses are coming to begin with? <laughs> yeah. We should have had claps. What we need is claps, guys. <laughs> Yeah, because it's the torch method of like, oh, they like the torches and right. they see like in the Lord of the Rings and probably in history somewhere, but I don't know. Yeah, don't the Great know Wall of China of and shit. Rings. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like that method, except high pitched, obnoxious noises where it sounds like, hey, can someone answer the fucking phone? What is that? <laughs> I just wanted a scene where one of those ladies stubs her toe and she's like, oh, oh, oh fuck, great. Now everyone thinks they're being attacked. <laughs> Never should have bought that Hitachi. And as they're getting ready for battle, my only thought was, oh, please, God, don't gird your loins. You can't, they can't get any more girded. There's no room <laughs> to gird those loins anymore. You'll be wearing a thong if you gird those fucking loins. I also love the choice of weapons that they have there because they, like they're walking, they're, <laughs> like handing everybody their little wood, wooden weapons. Some people are getting axes and shit, but some people very much are not. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a tennis racket, or like a <laughs> cricket bat, an umbrella. Yeah. There's fucking nothing. <laughs> shovels. A lot of people get battle shovels, shovels. and that fucking sucks. <laughs> fucking the shovels, shovels are like a tier one weapon for them too. That's like the good shit. Yeah, well, I mean, crook is the pinnacle. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like, I got a post holer. How am I gonna fucking? It's impossible. They're so heavy. <laughs> All right, so and then so the queen is like, uh oh, the Halamites are attacking, and the prince is like, oh, well, let me hand pick some guards that can look after you, my sister. <laughs> oh like, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I'll tell you what. Why don't we measure them in stabbing distance to you? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Would you the best guy? <laughs> Guys are just in stabbing distance. Yeah, of course she outsmarts him though. He picks out all his best assassins, and then she sends them to the front lines. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah. she's classic. There's only one option, which is for him to do. No, he's not going to do it. Like, no, oh, he's not. Yeah, he's not going to do it. Right. Well, and that's reason. she's we like, why. she's smart, but not smart enough, right? Because she says like, "Aha! I figured out that you were sending assassins after me, so now." I'll let you stand next to me with a knife the whole yeah. time. Now stand behind me with your sword and guard me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I guess she knows how lazy he is, though, because he's not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, say. I guess. And then we go back to uh, Mitt Romney's tent, and I love it because there is such a married couple foul here that you. Just, she, he says, "Oh, I'm so sorry, hon. On your wedding day." It was uh, our wedding. Definitely our well, my wedding. In fact, I was really into it <laughs> on your wedding day. He said so, that's the actual line. Yep. I'm not joking. Yep. You're on right. Your he wedding does. day. So, OK. And now we see just how many fucking horses and extras they invest in this piece of shit when they line up for battle. The Elamites come. They, they burn down the Hebrew camp. Right. Fuck their mm -hmm. lead twos all up. This is going to take hours to replace. Their camp is so shitty that the horse people are doing them a favor, by the way. Really? Like, oh, you clean, cleaned it for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Looks better. And uh, by the way, I, w I don't know about you guys. I would not be good at all the general and miscellaneous and sundry battle shouting. You know, <laughs> I, I feel like I would want to focus on my hand-to-hand -hand combat. There's right? a lot. Everybody. Yeah. Ah, 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 and I just I wouldn't be good at that. You got to be able to multitask, <laughs> man. Back then, they could really multitask. It feels like when you're watching a theater production, they try to do audience participation. You're like, fucking cut. I just want to sit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the but the Elwes assume that all the Jews chickened out since there was nobody there. But Lot is ready to spring his trap. He's got oil that he's going to set on fire and trap uh -huh. them when they come running after. He's going to, okay, so first, he, first he's going to send a bunch of guys out. Guys are like laser pointers for Elamites. Don't worry, they'll follow them. <laughs> and when they follow our guys, we're going to set fire to a little thing that you could actually just run through and be fine because it's only like three inches. Yep. But they'll all stop anyway, and then we'll win because they'll be stopped. Right. You could run through it, or if you don't want to get semi-warm, you could also walk four feet to around it. Around it, yes, <laughs> on either side. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But that's their big fucking plan. And by the way, as they're charging, we get the, uh, I don't know who the fuck these people, the Hellenites, I guess, whatever they're supposed to be. We get, he shouts, again, in the miscellaneous battle shouting, the word of the day is kill. <laughs> I was just like, 
Oh, I'll tell that to Phoebe. She's homeschooled now. So the word of the day is kill. Number of the day is nine. I really wanted Pee Wee Herman to pop up and like ah! ping pong balls come running down on him. I wanted it to cut to like one of his generals going, what the fuck did you think we were going to do up until now? Right? Like you thought we were just going to, we were going to, we had our phaser set on stun. Fuck you. I mean, it's good luck that that day happened to be the word of the day. Still, you know? like Brunch or something, you know, and they'd be like, ah, fuck. How are we going to use that? All right, so, yeah, so they set off this elaborate-ass trap where there's, like, gears oh, that have robot shoes kicking balls through fucking hoops, and then that sets this fire off, the fucking wall of fire. And they set it off with, like, a 100 feet to spare so that the guy could just be like, oh, everybody, well, definitely should stop then. If this yeah. if I, if in the movie right. this is harmful, then we'll stop ahead of time. <laughs> I also love that they set the ignition to like, uh, well, okay, lot. You're gonna have to absolutely nail this 90 yard throw with the bolo. But assuming that, yeah. yeah. So all the Jews pop up and start throwing rocks at them, and they have no idea how to handle that shit. I gotta say though, we get we get a battle scene, a long, long battle scene, and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, this is better than today's action movies because I'm genuinely not sure if these people are dying or not. Like I. They might- <laughs> Half of them might have died. We probably lost at least 30 horses or so. Yeah, a tremendous amount of my notes here are just, ah, the 1960s when (laughs) how you did fire stunts was just lighting Larry the stuntman on fire. Yeah, exactly. exactly. There's a quick shot of two guys wrestling off a horse and the horse clearly tramples them to death. Like, uh, and they're like, well, we, we have the footage though. I mean, what it, we might as well, wait, wait, it would be an insult to their that? legacy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Use. That's how Larry would have wanted they it. They died doing what they love. <laughs> Harmful stunts. That <laughs> yeah. Getting absolutely led to their death without safety horses. codes. Yeah. So Malkior notices that they've got the big, you know, oil thing at the top and that that's the key to this firewall. <laughs> So he runs yeah. up to take care of that. Ishmael follows him. Ishmael pulls out his own shepherd crook ninjutsu, right? <laughs> yep. And then fucking Lot says, hey, man, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but that's kind of my fucking thing, right? It's not like it's a Jew thing. thing. That's, a, that's a lot thing, okay? We're already like white guys in our late 30s, early 40s. <laughs> I really need you to let us be differentiated, Ishmael. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the fire goes out. That means that now the bad guys, the Elamites, can get through their firewall and attack yeah. anyway. So they have to retreat and use the dam. They're going to blow the dam and get everybody wet now. So I got a quick question, though. Before that, they're firing arrows through the fire and they become fire arrows. <laughs> yeah. That's and I, not- see this, I see this in movies and I'm like, is that really worse than an arrow? Like, oh, there's an arrow in my heart. Oh, and it's on fire. Oh, so, you know, like, uh, now my day's you know, like ruined. If, if anything, that'll help. It'll cauterize it or something. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, so they retreat to the dam. They're going to like break that down and flood the valley or whatever. And this is <laughs> and my thought is and I'm sorry again, but my thought is just like, yeah, they're like, yeah, we can ride across the harmless fire now. And I'm like, that was always allowed. Yep. <laughs> yep. That was an option the whole time. time. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we have the whole like, can they destroy the dam? And t-? Yeah, they can. They can. And then yep. we get the yep. point of this scene, which is to realize how much worse, like, flood the valley had to be back in the pre CGI days. Like, don't get me wrong. They killed some extras with it, but it wasn't very impressive. <laughs> It's just a guy throwing a bucket of water <laughs> at a television showing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. And when they're, by the way, when they're fighting on top of the dam, there was one quick death scene where it was absolutely an extra that fell and was looking at the camera like, does it look real? Guys, does it, is it, is it, is it, is it good? Does it look real? Like he's looking. Oh, God, it was so good. So, yeah, but ultimately they win. The, the Hellamites have to, like, run off. But, but but damn it, if their whole fucking town wasn't burned down along the way. We have a quick scene where the, the, the queen has to talk shit to the prince. You know, she's like, ha-ha, you didn't even get to stab anybody, and we won the fight. <laughs> They're consistent in that they don't know you can just walk 14 feet to your left. Like they're consi- <laughs> they, they can't get through the fire. They can't get through the tiny amount of water that I guess is fatal yeah. to them. You know, and I, there's so many little things this fight scene I loved. One of them was they accidentally showed two people on the same side fighting each other. Did you catch that? <laughs> there's two of the guys that were dressed all in black. Like, God, you, you're not fighting. <laughs> 
two extras actually got in a fight. And they just, <laughs> they just yeah, went with it. That's really good. Let's keep that. Yeah. <laughs> and during the Queen's, like, I'm glad that you've won the battle thing, my favorite moment is, like, three of the Jews are like, yeah, let's kill her. And Lot turns to him, he's like, what? What? Guys, that wasn't who we were fighting, and they're like, "Oh, so we're inside sorry. voice, dude. Inside voice, yeah. Ishmael." <laughs> yeah, right. Well, because they're like, "Yeah, but you have slaves, so we should kill you too." And he's like, "Dude, we don't. They just burned down our fucking lean tos. I was going to ask if we could crash on her couch. Read the room, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly." And she's like, "Yeah, you can stay with us." And Lot's like, "We'll accept your generous offer of shelter, but only if." And I'm like, "How the fuck are you going to put a condition on that, man?" <laughs> So now that we get this scene, like it's the next day or whatever, the Jews are looking over their burned over village and everything, and they're fucked up. Damn. They all have a nice drink of mud, but the mud tastes a little weird. <laughs> I wanted him so badly to be like, does this taste like dead bodies to you? <laughs> <laughs> but even worse, it tastes like salt. It turns out that when they blew their dam, they uncovered a bunch of salt. And now their fields are all salted and they'll never <laughs> grow land there. Yeah. Ugh, this mud is salty. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like my mud to have a little bit more of a mommy. Anyway, so, <laughs> but at any rate, then he realizes, hey, you know what we could do? We could just sell the salt. Duh. Mm. We'll be salt salesmen. And everybody's like, fuck yeah, man. Salt salesmen. They, yeah, yeah, they become merchants of salt, which is 100% the title of some alt-right podcast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, upon the realization that we just watched an hour and a half of film that could have been summed up with a narrator at the beginning of the movie saying Lot was a wealthy salt merchant that lived in Sodom, I think we all need a break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Is anybody going to butt fuck anybody? Like, we're in Sodom. Would you make a movie about Paris and never show the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> Couldn't they at least have had every third person kind of walking funny in the background? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the almost entirely non-biblical conclusion of The Last Days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Hebrews, hear me. For today I shall reveal a plan to conquer the Helamites. Huzzah! Hooray! First, we shall build a fake village for them to burn down. Wait, why? Because... While they are burning it, we shall prepare our underground oil tube, which we'll use to create a wall of fire in front of their horses. Wait, a wall of what now? What if they go a different direction? Different direction, then right. Yeah. They won't. They will not. Don't worry. Then, while they're trapped between our firewall and our fake village, we shall surprise them with our stone throwers and our rake guys. I'm sorry, rake guys? Yes, rake guys. Our rake guys shall be the fear of the Helamites. None shall survive. Uh, question. Yes. Could we uh, dedicate some of the time we spend on a very specific flame wall to making some swords so yeah. we don't have to use rakes? Yeah. Oh, Ishmael, you fool. What would we do with the swords after? Think. A rake is still a rake after the battle. I mean, yeah, but... um Look, I haven't even gotten to the dam attack yet, so let's hold all the questions till I get through the plan, huh? Dam attack? Yes, but that's only if our rake guys and our one-directional firewall fails, so... Okay. okay. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit, and apparently we're, we're going to cut to years in the future. Uh, which is weird for a movie called The Last Days of Sodom and Gomorrah, that so much of it happened <laughs> yeah, years earlier. Really, really stretching the definition yeah. of last days. I mean, they are of days. days. <laughs> they were all days. But anyway, now Lot is a, a wealthy salt merchant, and Ishmael is collecting money to buy slaves their freedom. Now, there is going to be a very, like, damn it, Ishmael, abolition again kind of a feel to this whole scene, <laughs> yep. right? Yep. He, like, shows up at Lot's house, and he's like, dude, can we... Free the fucking slaves already? And Lot's like, me feeds this? That's what you sound like. You sound like that every goddamn time we talk, dude. Ishmael is unequivocally the only good character in <laughs> yes, this entire movie. Yes, yes he is. Absolutely. Absolutely. The hero, he is a fucking hero. 
Yeah. He's out there. He's letting another dude fuck his wife because he cares about slavery so much. He's like, I don't, yeah, I don't have time for keep track of who's fucking whose wife. <laughs> Can we get these people out of slavery? I also love how he tries to bring Lot's wife into it. He's like, come on, you were a slave, right? Right? And she goes, like, <laughs> and her actual line is, she's like, I wasn't, man, I wasn't a mine slave. Like, I had to fuck the, the queen. Like, that. Yeah, she's like, you. She, you and your identity politics. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but Ishmael said mean things to Lot's wife, so that's where that's where this is going to end. Lot's like, "Hey man, you need to you need to fuck off." I'll tell you exactly how this scene ends. It it's it does what happens in a lot of scenes in this movie, which is whenever they don't know how to get out of a scene, they just do a face smash kiss. It's just like <laughs> Yes, they do. His Lot's wife is talking, they're like debating and he's just like and then they're like, okay, I well, guess that's the uh, cut. Yeah, there's a know. weird fucking conversation that goes on before that, though, right? Like, so after Ishmael leaves, Lot's wife turns to him, Ilda turns to him and he goes, she goes, okay, so who's the top Jew all time? All time. Who's top of the ranking? <laughs> right? He goes, oh, that's my uncle, Abraham. Yeah, no question. He's the top Jew. And she's like, okay, if you, what would you have to do to be top Jew? He's like, this is a weird conversation. We're yeah. going to have to smash, weird... face smush our way out of this scene or something. I obviously have to win the Shepherd's Crook fighting tournament championship. <laughs> yeah, but he's, have you seen Abram with a with a hook? It's, he's unbeatable. He's no crazy. Yeah. I don't even want to get into you, it. You, you think I look good. I, he just mops the floor with me. So, <laughs> Alright, so then we cut over to his daughter who is still fucking Doctor Strange and, and in this scene, Doctor Strange is, we open, this is so weird of a place to open oh this goddamn God. scene. They open this scene on him having just told this daughter that he had fucked the other daughter. <laughs> yeah. But we don't hear that happen, right? We get there for the reaction and we have to piece that together. Yeah. If I hadn't seen this scene, you couldn't get me to believe that it was real. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's, it, uh, what what's happening here? Can anyone really break down? So, like, Doctor Strange thinks it it'll be really hot or something if he's like hey i fucked your sister and he's like uh, yeah i mean i fu i fucked your dad too. i fucked your whole family and just makes you even hotter for me admit it <laughs> and then she's like i guess yes i don't because I don't, yeah, no right because then they fuck afterwards no like honestly yeah. let's be honest though we've read the bible right this whole do i remind you of your father he nailed her king yeah true. That, right that's like true. that doesn't work often but he nailed it for her and I have here that they try. How many fetishes are they trying to squeeze into one scene? If, <laughs> yes. this, if this scene was on Pornhub, it would be in every single category. Like it would have been, <laughs> be the top movie on every thing you click on. He also tries to initiate an MMF threesome here with a guy who randomly walks in. <laughs> yep. And yep. the guy's yep. like, uh, no, and leaves. <laughs> yeah, right. Like this, this guy walks in, this soldier walks in, and, she, and he's like, oh, hey, you want to, Dave's here. You want to fuck Dave? It's Sodom. You're, yeah. You can fuck Dave. He's like, oh, this is perfect. I'll leave you with this random guard and you can fuck him. I'm going to see if you have any extended family I can fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and she's like, I guess, Dave, you and, da and Dave's like, I cannot fucking believe that you would do this to me. And then he, <laughs> he dips the fuck out. You said you texted me 911 emergency. You just want me to fuck <laughs> one of the. Come on, man. Do you know how long it takes to wipe? This is. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> and then. We're like, my, it's like that did or didn't work. I don't know. I still don't know. Like, what yep. was the plan? Was this a plan? Did it work? I don't fucking know. And then my last note is he can't even let her head go where it wants to consensually. He's got, he's like, during the whole scene, he's like turning her head. Now look over here. Now you will look <laughs> over here. This is all consensual, right? Yep. It's 1962. Yeah. Everything's great. That's what passed for consent back then. Yeah. All right, so now is the time on Sprockets when we dance again. <laughs> I swear to you, I laughed for a minute when I saw this note while I was watching this. I just you look for four and a half goddamn minutes now in this movie that we've already been watching for an hour and a half. Now, all of a sudden, there's this long, fucking pointless dance scene. Yep. But we get a, a quick shot of an old Jew in the crowd that's like, get a load of this sexy dance. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh. They are scandalized. Also, <laughs> the movie gets bored of this dance halfway through. It does. Like, 
I just want to say, as a magician, I totally feel the sexy dancer's pain when you're performing, and then everyone yeah. in the party just starts before you're finished, just talking to Uncle Murray. I, I got it. I just want to say I felt her pain. See, I had a similar thing because as a musician, I was like, God, how bored? Do th- this is live music. <laughs> this is not, oh, we got the DJ running the sexy music track. Imagine being a biblical era musician and you just have to play the same shitty flute riff for like nine yeah. hours. <laughs> sexy dance. Oh. oh my God. Fuck kill me. Here's, I here's don't want to go hug that spike guy. Yeah, I, I can't do Here's this a anymore. ditty you might all be familiar with. It's called <laughs> Doodly Doodly Do. Kind of snake charming. All right. <laughs> All right, <laughs> hour 54. Let's get this cracking. <laughs> no, it's different than the snake charming. The snake charming one is dun 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 dun. <laughs> Mine is dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> it's different. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah. I'm married to a folk musician. I've had this fight, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now apparently this is a ceremony where the Jews have paid off their debt or some shit, and and the queen at the end of all of this goddamn dancing names Lot the first minister of Sodom, which sounds again sexier than it is. <laughs> yeah, the Eli Bosnick the title story. Of my porn. <laughs> yeah, but Doctor Strange is pissed. He wanted to be the first minister of Sodom. God damn it! Meanwhile, outside during the sexy dancing, Ishmael wanders off. You know to connive and plot with his incessant abolition he's got a few conspirators and they spring their slave revolt now apparently their plan was to open the gate that's it. end of plan yep, yep that's that was the plan. Plan. <laughs> which i'll be honest again that's what a good guy would do the one good character oh in yeah the movie, who by the way is not the like chosen by god one nope. or the important one. he's doing the shit he comes into this town he's like There is fucking slavery happening. Let's end slavery. And Lot Romney's like, well, yeah, but what about the market? Or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Fuck the economy. The Dow is up, though, is the thing. So we can't, (laughs) we can't, we can supply side economic. Anyway, and and this guy who's not the main character is like, fuck it. I'm going to disobey your dumbass not wanting to rock the boat. Lot Romney is literally, I'm not making this up. The part of the scene was, hey, man. We can do this by law. We could, if we just wait another few um, midterm elections, we can have a, a, a semi majority in the Senate and we can introduce a bill that will slowly over the next 30 years reduce the number of slaves that are in this town. And the good guy is like, no, how about we just open this fucking wooden gate of slaves? And he's like, I'm going to go do that. And he's, like, not the protagonist. No. It's uh, mind-blowing. Well, because if he was the protagonist, he would have realized before that that he should have had, like, weapons for them or something. <laughs> right? Because they, they run out. They, they all run out of the thing. And, and, and they're like, hey, I'm an escape slave. Let me hide in your house. And everybody's like, no, no, you can't hide in my house. <laughs> and then the fucking Dr. Strange, I love this so much. He walks up to his sister and he's like, hey, um, apropos of nothing, uh, <laughs> yeah. if I stopped a, I don't know, slave revolt, for example, could I be the first minister? And she's like, I don't know, go stop a slave revolt and we'll fucking see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, there isn't one. I'm just saying, I, you know, in general. Like, if I, <laughs> just uh, as a question, yeah, just generally. I love when we get the montage of all the different biblical locking mechanisms. Yeah. I, I lived for that. That was awesome. <laughs> By the way, one of them was clearly the rake shop. Did you notice that? Like, oh, yes. you, know, you can't hide in my rake shop. <laughs> These things are deadly, goddammit. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. You need a permit to come in here and operate a rake. Yeah. It's, it's a 30-day waiting period on some of these. Yeah. So, yeah, so the prince heads out to stop all those runaway slaves, and nobody will let those slaves hide because this is a terribly orchestrated revolt. And the queen stops the sexy dance party right in the middle of it. She's like, Hey, uh, guys, sorry to step, stop the sexy dance party. I just want to let everybody know I heard about a little slave revolt. I'm going to turn my back. I'm going to count to 10. If all the slaves are back in their pen by the time I turn <laughs> around, no one will get in any trouble and we can go back to sexy dancing. <laughs> but actually, but the prince has already stopped. Right? Like he's already caught all the slaves. That was it was a. 10 yeah, seconds. Like, oh, isn't this weird? The thing I said hypothetically, like, what if this happened? Like, what? what? what are the odds? It's crazy. <laughs> I was just, I was going to sell all my stocks anyways, is the thing. Because yeah. the two, I sell them every Tuesday. Yep. Oh, I'm going to go to jail. <laughs> 
no, I am not because there are no consequences. No, no consequences. Yeah. That's yeah. True. We should, we should point out to our listeners because we record a little in advance this time of year. Like if you'll recall all the way back to a week and a half ago, we thought that, like, <laughs> that was a bad thing to sell your stocks. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you, anyway, so yeah, they've stopped the slave revolt. They've captured all of the slaves and they've captured the leader Ishmael. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The good guy. The hero of this movie. Well, and just to prove that, just to prove how much Lot is not the hero, a lot goes like, hey, could we save just this guy? Could I? Could <laughs> I, could like, I well, beg you? We're the Jews, so we get to be in charge of the, to that guy. And Ishmael's like, no, I want to go with the slaves because I'm the only moral person in this entire yeah, movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> but what's amazing is he's he's having this like huge dramatic acting moment. He's like, no, you must take me. You must take me. And Lot's like, okay, Ishmael, relax. All right, we get it. You want to stay with the slaves. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all making, actors here. Come on. Fucking. Can you join me in the other room for a whisper fight? Ishmael, you are embarrassing me in front of the sodomites. <laughs> uh, and the queen's like, no, actually, this is great because we're done with the sexy dancing. Now we can uh, burn God. the slaves alive. That'll be great. That'll be super fun. And Lot's like, well, we don't want to watch slaves burn, do we, guys? Do we? Do we, guys? Guys. And all the Jews are like, I, I mean, <laughs> I would like to watch a little bit of slave burning. Is it just me? I'll watch a little. Like, if the slave burning's happening anyway, and I happen it's to not be like here, not gonna, It's not going to happen. Everybody will be talking about it tomorrow at work, and I will be the only <laughs> yeah, one who happened. doesn't know yeah. how it ended. <laughs> no, no. I'm not missing the slave burning. This is like Game of Thrones all over again. I had the whole thing spoiled for me. <laughs> This scene has so much fucking range. I gotta <laughs> right. say, this is just incredible. <laughs> I, really, this is 10 minutes of magic in this one <laughs> room. We get that all, all that we've covered. And then the, the Jews that are all like, kind of, yeah, like we do actually want to watch a slave burning, if I'm being honest. And it keeps going from there. It's, it's so yeah, fantastic. No, because this scene is just ramping up. There's still a damn sword fight in it. Right, because oh, God, yes. all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they have, they have a religion wide vote as to whether they want to watch <laughs> the slaves be tortured to death. Um, they do, and then yep. fucking Doctor Strange turns to Lot and says, "Oh, you think that's bad? I fucked both your daughters." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be fair, he delivers a pretty awesome zinger here. He's like, "Hey, do you remember when you said you'd kill me if I fucked your daughter? I guess you're gonna have to kill me twice, bitch." <laughs> I left. I left for a really long time. It's so good, and it, it's just so magical too. Because it's like, oh, I don't want this scene to end. What else can I do? Oh, on the topic of slave burning, I guess I don't know. Is that, uh, I was full of what's burning happening. with I desire for <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah, so they go to sword fight for a little while. Boy, have movie sword fights gotten better since okay. 1962? So. They have to fight, and this is a case, this happens from time to time in, in any movie, like god-awful movies or, you know, whatever, where I write a joke, but then it turns out I wrote, was writing the movie. Yep. Does that happen to you guys? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, for all the time. We, all the time. We They're fighting with swords, you know, actual <laughs> weapons. Yep. And I wrote as a joke, <laughs> well, Lot's nothing without his wobbly shepherd's hook thing. <laughs> and then he fucking drops his sword, you know, an actual weapon. And he goes and gets his fucking wobbly shepherd's hook. And I was uh, like, I was joking. I didn't mean it. I, uh. Oh, yeah, but no, but that turns the fucking tide of the battle. He's like yeah, getting beat. He's getting beat. He grabs his shepherd, shepherd's crook. He's like, here, bonk you in the face. Ha! ha. <laughs> it's either the weakest fucking sword or the strongest fucking shepherd's thing. <laughs> he's, he hacks it several oh, times. He, he's yes, like, I'll just block Exactly, that. just That's blocks easy. the sharpen. Okay. We get a moment toward the end where of this fight. Where the real misstep by Doctor Strange was he decides to try to parry a series <laughs> of harmless staff pokings. You know, like he's, got, <laughs> right. he's getting poked out with the curved part of the staff. Like this is nothing. You don't need to even worry about it. But he like tries to parry them, like, oh, oh I can't keep up with this, the attacks, and then he loses. At one that. point, fucking Lot hooks him on the back of the neck with the shepherd's yes! hook, spins him around a la Mario throwing Bowser <laughs> from the tail. That was so amazing. Yep. I was like, like, the, like that is what exactly what I'd do if I was making fun of this scene. Exactly. Okay, but to be fair, the conclusion of this scene, I paused it because I was laughing so hard, right? So 
as you expect, the daughter runs over and throws herself on top of the brother. And she's like, no, don't murder him, Papa. And he just does murder him. Yes. <laughs> yep. It is the first time yep. in a movie I have ever seen that where it's like, please, no, Papa. And the protagonist is just like, stab. Sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> He's laying there in his daughter's arm. Lada's, like, Lada's daughter is holding this man and saying, no, but he made love to me. We're in love, Daddy. And he just stabs him to death. And then the queen says, you are a true sodomite, Lot. And I was like, did he fuck the guy in the ass? I, I didn't catch that. Yeah, the queen comes over and she's like, hey, I, you know, not for nothing, but great job murdering my brother. Lot's like, um, I don't. Thanks, I guess. I don't even know now. <laughs> and then, of course, she, the queen says, you know, but like, but hey, wait a minute. Aren't you a murderer as the judge of all the Jews? Don't you have to judge yourself now? <laughs> yes. And this is where he's like, yes, I do. And she's like, if you were judging yourself, what would you try yourself for? And he was like, I would sentence me. To jail. Well, actually, to be says, tried. Yeah, he would sentence for himself to a life. trial. That's not how it works at all. Yeah. He goes through an extensive appeals court process. He's like, well, first, <laughs> there'd be the trial. Then I'd appeal it to the Ninth Circuit. And then if I could win my appeal to me, which is me. Yeah, she makes the mistake of asking Andrew. <laughs> I really, really wanted to watch this trial. Lot, you stand accused of murder. How do you plead? Not guilty, your honor, but more. I request you recuse yourself from the trial. <laughs> oh, yes? Why is that? Because you are the murderer. How dare you, sir? I'll hold you in contempt. Oh, you know it's true. Because after all, I am guilty. My God, what have I done? Dude, these Jews are fucking nuts. Right? Hey, can I have some of your poop? I told you to order your own. I, I, I wasn't hungry. Well, now, of course, you're hungry. Get your hands off me. Get your hands off me. <laughs> exactly. This movie, it was not too late to save this movie is all we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and Ildith is following behind him going like, hey, dude, don't you just you volunteered for the fucking death penalty. Did you see that you just volunteered for the death? That's stupid. You're fucking <laughs> stupid. Stop it. I know she's like the guy very clearly like challenged you to a duel. I don't. This feels not like your fault. And he's like, nope, sorry. I mean, <laughs> he, he was laying there helpless when I stabbed him in the heart. He's like, I don't free slaves that I could easily free. And I don't care that there's murder and all the slave torture and stuff. But rules are rules. I have to sentence myself to jail for. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, now all the people in the city have shown up to watch the rebellious slaves get executed with the, you know, the little spinny thing they use in Price is Right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Again, with the overcomplicated torture, and we watch her realize it's disappointing, right? So they're all on the spinny wheel from Wheel of Fortune. She slathers them with oil. No, from which Price then, is Right. From Price is Right. Vertical. Right. Vertical. Yeah, they spin the wheel, and then they... Go over fire so they catch on fire. And we get to watch the queen be like, oh, this will be long. And oh, nope, they all just caught fire. <laughs> we put them on. And then she says, and then she says, stop the wheel. So they stop it. And for the rest of the scene, I'm imagining that the dead body that's on the bottom is obviously just cooking now. <laughs> and they all must be like, what is fucking gross? Like, oh, my God. They the didn't turn the off the fire or anything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wheel in the sky keeps on turning. Keeps on <laughs> All right. And then, okay. So we cut to Lot. He's in prison, either in a dungeon, like he's sometimes he's in a dungeon, but sometimes he's like looking out a window at what's happening in the torture. It's, it's very confusing. So he's, he's got to pray now. He's totes sorry mm -hmm. that he led the Hebrews into Sodom. God, this is, this is his fucking Oscar clip, right? Oh, yep. yeah. Very much so. Oh. oh. Yeah, that, that's the one. Yes, and then a bunch of angels pop out of Marcellus Wallace's briefcase or something. Apparently, <laughs> double Santas. Why? Okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, so these two angels show up, glowing in gold, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, this is it's it's a good thing that you prayed right now at this moment because we were just <laughs> about to come in here and uh, destroy this city with brimstone." 
and kill everyone in it. And Lot, to his credit, is like, even the babies? And the angels are like, Yep. Especially the babies. Yeah, they're, they're have you e- seen the evil baby. perverted ass babies they have in this town? Are you fucking, of course the babies, yeah. yeah. By the way, spoiler alert, this movie will go on to prove that it has evil children, so <laughs> get ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I love, I, if we look at this character of Lot Romney, he is a complete asshole who lives and does all the things that the Sodomites do and, and is cool with slavery, does all this evil stuff. But then once he, there, he's going to suffer, He's like, oh, but oh, I'm going to get owies. So, uh, God, <laughs> yep. Yep. fix it. And then he's the hero. Exactly. He, you are the chosen exactly. person, Lot. You're fucking awesome. For why? No idea. Fucking Just amazing. And then they do. Okay. So, first of all, they, they completely fuck up everything biblical in this. Because this is where Lot does the whole. But what if I find 40 men who are 20, 10, 6, 50 cents in some envelopes that are not, you know, and. <laughs> uh, that's supposed to be Abraham, first of all. Lot is the one guy that they managed to find. And it's not like he then goes on and looks for people that are innocent, right? No. no. We, ju- we just watch him negotiate with himself. He's like, 50, 40, 30. <laughs> and the angels are like, do you- I hear 20? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Should I? Yeah. <laughs> Keep going, I guess. <laughs> and I always thought when I read this in the Bible, A, it was hilarious that he was like haggling with God. I always yeah, found that right, to be a funny right. concept. And then B... I love that he has to go count them. Like, well, you're God. Like, can you just tell me how many there are? And I'll go get them. Like, why do I have to fucking count? I don't know. So, yeah. So the angels reluctantly agree that if there are 10 good men in this city, God won't destroy it. So then the way that it plays out in this movie, Lot gets all the good people the fuck out of the city so God can destroy the babies, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I wanted him to get like, three quarters of the way out of the city and be like, oh, I was supposed to be looking for 10 guys. Uh, you know what? We're almost gone. We'll just, uh, <laughs> I feel bad now. But by the way, he didn't do all this in time to save those poor people who are burned to death nope. on a wheel of fire. Nope. Like he, he comes out like the minute she's like, oh, they're dead. He's like, I'm here. I'm like, yeah, oh, couldn't exactly you pray a little fucking faster? <laughs> and meanwhile, the angels are like, wait, are you supposed to offer your daughter's up for a gang rape or something are we not doing that bit we're not doing that bit okay not doing that bit no (laughs) no did you get the rewrite we're not no hold on change script i'm yeah yeah, cut that out (laughs) so and and then lot like he he finishes off his little prayer the angels disappear and he's like i thank jehovah for his mercy as it pertains to destroying this city with flaming rocks the mercy (laughs) is what struck me about that yeah and this is where we get another stand-up comedy routine it's great because lots just in the town square like talking and they're like Hey, again, actors, everything he says is funny for no reason. And you just laugh out loud. Tee a lot. Yeah, a lot of How about airline food, huh? (laughs) (laughs) It's not very good. It's terrible. I I wanted him to start throwing in jokes, but those ones get no reaction. He's just like, please, (laughs) the Lord will destroy this place. (laughs) Okay. Um, All right. How about this? Instead of the coronavirus, how about the blue moon virus? Because it only... (laughs) <laughs> oh. Anyways, crickets. don't look back. You're gonna turn into salt. Stop butt fucking each other, and they like go, beep, 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 beep. Hold on, we gotta stop. <laughs> Too soon. All right, all right. So God frees Ishmael and, and Lot. They go out. They try to convince all of the people that you know that they're that the city's gonna be destroyed. They all laugh at him. And this is okay. I I, I want to point this out because this is so. Di- I don't want to be the fucking fanboy complaining about how Ra's al Ghul never did train Batman to be a ninja. But like, <laughs> as they're walking out of the prison, the angels blind the prison guards. That's not. It's your. It's the rape gang that the angels were supposed <laughs> to blind. I so fucking cheated. I waited two fucking hours for this. Someone in the writer's room was like, so we're just losing the lightning blinding entirely? No, Steve, <laughs> you can keep the lightning blinding. Do you want to lightning blind some guards? Yes. Well, I do. Yeah. I do want to. Lightning blind was good. good. Well, and I, I, was, I thought like, okay, the reason they're doing all this weird stuff with the sisters fucking Doctor Strange is that they're setting up for when he's going to be like, here, take my, or sis, yeah, take my daughters because like they fuck anyone. You know, like that. I thought they were trying to prime the pump for that a little bit. So it's like, so like, you know, oh, it's just more understandable that Lot made that decision or something. And then they just, no, they yeah, just cut that. Yeah, something. But no, they just cut out all of the stuff from the Bible. Oh, yeah, and okay, I love this. So he does, Lot gives everybody the big, you know, God's going to destroy your city speech. And then he does the whole Jerry Maguire, who's coming with me bit. 
right? <laughs> yep. like, no, I, we just do. We we there's butt stuff here, though. <laughs> yeah, just that one old guy who recovered from his double whip death. <laughs> yeah, that's the one guy. And then, of course, the queen is. She's like, yeah, it's a bunch of bullshit. And then, like, lightning strikes right next to her, and she goes, Psst, "Yep, Psst, lightning, yeah. whatever." Which, yeah. by the way. She will spend the rest of the movie, no matter what yeah. happens, going, ugh, okay, I get it. Angels showed up and hit you with a fiery sword. <laughs> Drama queen. That shit yeah. happens. This, this happens frequently in the Bible in that because the actual version, insofar as there is any real story here, what happened was some guy told some bullshit that wasn't real and some people went, yeah, that's not fucking real, dude. I don't believe you. But in the Bible written version of it, they say, well, and then fire and brimstone literally fucking came out of the earth and like a dragon and all the shit that you obviously would see and believe. And then the people were still like, nah, I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't believe right. that. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so Lot invites everybody to come with him. He leads all the righteous people out of the city. The daughters are still kind of mad about him killing their fuck buddy, but they go with him anyway. They, one of the daughters delivers this like, oh, I am so going to look at your dick when you're drunk. <laughs> it's the fucking best. I'm going to rape you in a cave. You don't know. <laughs> and it, it, he has to warn everybody. He's like, and whatever you do, don't look back or the omnibenevolent being will turn you to salt. Right. We all know. Right? This is yet another way that all the miracles happen in, in the Bible. Okay, you can't look at it. Yes, but definitely yes. there's a miracle <laughs> happening behind you. But trust me, if you look, you'll die. But it's, <laughs> oh my God, I, I wish you could see this smiting. It's a real doozy. It is, oh, oh look at all the smiting. Why, no, why don't look would at it. You they can't look put at it. in their own book the part where the magician asked everyone to close their eyes? Yep, <laughs> right? Yeah. Why would you yep. do that? It got better at it. And I love it too because. His wife, the whole thing with, with Lot's wife, you know, we all know the pillar of salt stuff, but, but I love it because she's like, I, I, I try, she has this scene where she's like, I, I tried to believe, but it's just, it's too fucking stupid. There's no way. I can't <laughs> believe in your dumb God. Like it's, ah. Oh, it's her entire monologue at the end of this movie is her just being like, wait, they're going to turn people into salt for looking? That's, that's not fucking real. I. <laughs> That they walk, stupid. they go to the fucking city gates, the city gates open up and somebody's like, it's a miracle like at Kroger. I was like, she's like, it's fucking wind does yeah. that though, guys. Come on, come on. <laughs> like, there could be somebody standing over there. We don't know. And then, of course, yeah, the, the city starts falling apart and the queen is just going like, well, guys, sometimes the city falls apart, right? It's just yeah, it's that time of year. In, by the way, she squeezes in one last two claps and I'm like, yeah, oh, okay, yes, what does that yes. one mean? What is oh. oh, that one means the city's falling apart. Come to the center of the palace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that two claps means come stand over this rock that's about to fall on all of us. That's what clearly what that means. Yeah, and they're trying to make it like, of course, again, this is filmed in 1962. They don't have CGI. Yeah. So the way they do this is, first of all, they just like drop <laughs> big rocks on people because those are extras. They're cheap. And you, you drop a big enough rock on them. You don't even have to pay them. And they lean the cameras <laughs> left and right. Yeah. They're all of a sudden on the Titanic. Yes, is what right, right, exactly. And of course, the fucking queen's like, "This is just—it's a little bit of ground lean, people. We get ground lean this time of year. What the fuck is supposed to even be? It's happening? a flu. Relax. Don't ruin my spring break." <laughs> She's just like, "It's a normal lightning flame quake, Jesus, people." <laughs> yeah, when obviously, and this happens in Revelation too, which I find so funny in the book of Revelation, where it's like, everyone's like, nope, I still don't believe. Obviously, they would just be like, oh, fuck, that is real. Okay, I'm with you guys. <laughs> yeah, I believe. My bad, my bad. All it takes is seeing one fucking smiting. Like, I get it. I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, it could be, yes, a normal lightning flame quake, but the timing, the timing is hard to believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like, it, it, we see a bunch of people, of course, at Sodom, so everybody's like, oh, let's fuck quick before this bill. Oh, too late. God damn it. <laughs> I know, everyone gets really horny all of a sudden <laughs> at the end of, hey, do you want to, oh, I can't resist. Let's fuck under this giant statue that's clearly about to fall right on us. Yeah. Yep, I'm in. <laughs> oh, my God. And I, I will tell you, you know, if, if you've watched Good one to go. miniature clay building fall apart, you have watched all of them fall apart. You, there's really no reason to watch six goddamn minutes of it. Oh, no, we literally see the same exact <laughs> cut of the building falling oh down the same God. one 17 times, I think. Oh. <laughs> they just reused the footage in the midst of all the... Yeah, it's not not from 17 angles. No, no. 
All right. So meanwhile, all the good Hebrews are wandering out into the desert, not looking back. And Ildith is so pissy about not getting to look back. She's like, I bet this is so fucking awesome. I bet it's like really cool. And there's like colored flames and shit. <laughs> so she let, she decides to look back. And, and her reasoning is, I'm going to look back and I'm going to prove to Lot that there is no God, that it's actually just the force of his personality that is causing this city to explode. <laughs> Yeah. What? Yeah, it kind of falls apart. And she turns into the shittiest salt statue. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. You know someone walked into the props department and was like, so you guys have the salt statue, right, for a lot? And they were like, ha, ha, ha. do we have the salt statue? <laughs> oh, you we just wait. Several layers of styrofoam we can put on top oh, of each other. Oh, God, it's so bad. And okay, here's what I love the most about this, though, right? Because Lot's there just as she turns around. She turns around. She turns to salt. He cries. He drops to his knees and he starts to cry over her. It's not like human shaped. It's just a pillar of salt. No one else watched that happen, right? So they come up and he's just crying at the foot of a salt pillar. And everybody else <laughs> should be going like, it's all right. We'll get you new salt, right? <laughs> yeah. Or is he like crying from the discovery of this magnificent salt pillar or something? Like, yeah, like, oh. exactly. Exactly. I've never seen salt so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> but his daughters are like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry that stepmom turned into salt. That's so obviously what happened. Come on. Let's go rape you in a cave somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. It's over. That's it. That is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yep. End day. So <laughs> is what it says. At the <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, exactly. I guess that's German. All right. So obvious question at the close here. If your wife was going to be turned into a seasoning, which seasoning would you prefer mm. that she was turned into? Uh, pumpkin spice. Yeah. That, well, that's honestly, Ooh. obviously what Anna would turn into. <laughs> yeah. Rosemary? I don't know. All right. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, Thomas, thanks again for hanging out with us. I know you've got a lot going on with everybody in your in your family on house arrest here. I want to say you are absolutely our second favorite guest after Marsh. Uh, if you don't mind, could you remind our listeners cool. where they can hear more from you? I don't know. Why don't you tell people where they can find Marsh? <laughs> his shows. You're clearly your favorite, obviously. Did Marsh give up his precious time? Yeah. Go check out Opening Arguments, Serious Inquiries Only. Philosophers in space. Hey, we all need stuff to listen to while we're cooped up. Yeah, never so, been a know, better time to check out a new yeah, podcast. Yeah, so. as your kids are yelling at you, uh, pop in those headphones, listen to some nice opening arguments. We did a uh, really good opening arguments on just like kind of the legal Q and A around coronavirus that I would highly recommend. Like, can Trump stop the election and that kind of stuff? So yeah, go check it out. Really, really good stuff. And if you haven't listened to opening arguments before, like, honestly, that if, if there's just one podcast you're going to check out with your social distancing time, that's the one to do it. Like, basically, it just, they just take all of the news of the day and they break it down from a legal perspective. And and it, they just keep you on, in the know. Uh, Andrew will do a much better job generally informing you of the legal ramifications of things than the major media will so highly highly recommend that and all the thomas's shows so while that's going to do it for our review of the last days of sodom and gomorrah though it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to pay the bills next week so eli tell us what's on deck we'll be watching ambush time traveling christian kid fontainment oh Get ready. good christians do history <laughs> that's always fun <laughs> like today. No, it's not always fun. Now that I think about it, it's not, it's obviously not always fun. But with that to look forward to, we are going to bring episode 241 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Thomas for helping us out today, and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email Godawful movies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and available drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. And Lot's daughters literally fucked him. They, that's not, there's no joke. That's the actual Breakfast Club clothes into the story in the Bible <laughs> in the Holy Holy Bible his daughters had, had sex with him his own the real not a joke Sodomites went on to get way more interesting to watch on video <laughs> Eli 
never recovered from the lack of poop eating scenes. That's your thing. That's not from that was just you. That's that's no, that's in the that's, that's in there. It's not. <laughs> oh, it's in there. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I would hang up right now. <laughs> and we watched uh, the 2018 documentary. It was 38. <laughs> yeah. Are we, do we go down? Yeah, we, all the yeah, way down to page 28 here. That's it, Morgan. That's all of Doodly Do One. <laughs> that's all of Doodly Do One. <laughs> We're cutting Eli the fuck off on Doodly Do One. I wrote a full Doodly Do One, but it was just a hate crime. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right, so interstitial two. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.